start the meeting by reading the uh, opening announcement. Adequate public notice of this meeting was provided by the Secretary of the Board on February 26, 2019, the Home News Tribune and the Clerk of the City of New Brunswick. The time and location of this meeting and all meetings of this body are posted in the City right, of Seventy Eight Street, right here, right New Brunswick. Roll call, Mr. General. Mrs. Sadowski. Mrs. Seawood. Here. Mrs. Civilian. Mrs. Shukaitis. Here. Mrs. Solis. Here. Mr. Spencer. Here. Ms. Varela. Ms. Ortiz. Here. Dr. Caldwell. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can we have a flag salute, Dr. Johnson? Ready salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reorganization meeting will be held on Tuesday, April 30, 2019, beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. at the New Brunswick High School Auditorium. The regular Board of edu Education meeting will be held on Tuesday, April 30, 2019, beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. at the New Brunswick High School Auditorium. Now, um, item number three is the 2019-2020 budget presentation. Mr. General, Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. So, the Board of Education, Superintendent Johnson, members of the public, you all have in front of you a package that I'm going to briefly identify some areas of the budget. So, the first part of the uh, budget that I'd like to go to is to the advertised enrollments. Um, from October 31st of 2017 to October 15th of 2018, we actually declined a total of 61 students. Now that's the first time we've had a decline in total students in probably 15 years. Um, but as you can see, our bilingual, well the bilingual enrollment isn't on here, the special ed enrollment and the bilingual enrollment have increased which causes its own challenges. Um, the second part of the packet is the advertised revenues. So the budget dollar amount in terms of total dollar amount still stay, stayed the same. It's $192 million for the general fund budget and it's $223,550,000 in uh, including grants and local funding and preschool aid. You also then have for you the advertised appropriations. That really shows all the different line items that are in the budget. But the most important part of this that I'm going to focus on is where we break down the budgeted costs. So what we provided for you and the public is really just analyzing the general fund budget without the grants because that tends to make the numbers not be as true. So in 1819, the budget is 133,800,000. So this you see the breakdown of the costs in the budget by major categories. And then we have the 2019, 20 breakdown of budgeted costs, and then a tab specifically for the increase and decreases. So as you can see, um, the biggest increase that we've had in the budget on a percentage basis is the amount of money that needs to go to charter schools, which is increasing almost 21%. Charter schools and the funding formula and the increases in charter schools and the increases of students in charter schools, I think pose is uh, probably the biggest single funding threat that the district faces over the years. If the charter schools can continue to expand, we're going to continue to lose millions of dollars to them every year. The benefits, salaries and benefits increases you see there are for the current employees. Once again, this budget does not have any new positions budgeted for. Last year we budgeted 
uh, 18 and we ended up having to hire 48 new positions based on student need. The, the budget also does not include 10 current vacancies that we weren't able to fund. So through attrition, through analyzing every position that we have in the district, as people leave, we'll continue to analyze every job description and job duty and figure out a way to do more with less. Um, I guess I'll stress at this point in time that we are being shorted $45 million in state aid from the state of New Jersey. Our equalization aid should be $163 million and it's $118 million. This budget presented is $48 million under adequacy. So through the state funding formula, the state has said, looked at our district and our pupils, and said that our budget should be $48 million more than it is. We are not getting the funding. We're running a budget 75% of, of the amount of money that we deserve for the 10,400 kids. So it is going to be a very challenging upcoming year including this year and the next several years. There's only so many years you can continue to run that 75% of funding before you have to make some major reductions in the budget and Mr. major Mr. choices. General, can you explain to me um, capital projects? What, what does that entail? So capital projects are projects that are over $500,000, and we don't have any money budgeted for those. Those are all for the SDA. So that is a line item that I've left in there to show that all of that will be go through the SDA and we don't have any. And our matter of fact, our capital reserve account, we have $75 in it. That's a separate account that we, as a former rabbit district, we would like to have millions of dollars in it, but we have $75 in it. So we do depend on the SDA to cover us for the yes. capital? Yes, yes. And what is the status of, of the SDA right now? Well, the SDA is uh, done with all their pro projects, and now they're gearing up for a new round of funding. Right. So, besides all the uh, uh, any other things, I won't uh, remark on. But um, we're waiting for SDA to come out with funding, so we can hopefully get our projects that we have in line funded. Um, as you can see in terms of the increase and decrease, we did make the only red line item is supplies, other and PD, which is really the reason why those are cuts because a lot of these other line items, they're mandated costs. These are costs that are going up and in a lot of these areas, they're going up less due to us having costs savings and other things that we've done in order to keep these expenses down. So this 2019-20 budget is going to be a big challenge. We've made a lot of reductions in the budget so that we can balance it that where we haven't reduced any staff but we're going to continue to freeze spending and save money so that we can afford for to keep class sizes at the level that we expect. And last but certainly not least, the last page is the estimated tax impact. The average home in New Brunswick is assessed at $271,300. The increase from last year to this year proposed is $94.98 for the year, which would bring the average home taxes to $2,576.64 just for the school portion. Any questions from the Board of Education? Okay, at this time I'd like to just make a quick reminder. We will be entertaining uh, questions solely on the budget. That's it, no, no other items will be discussed at this time. Our regular board meeting will be at seven o'clock at which time we will entertain open mic for other questions. That being said, um, I open up uh, the questions from the public on the 2019-2020 budget. Please say your name. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Heather Sorge. 
Um, I am here tonight as the organizer of Healthy Schools Now, uh, which is a coalition of more than 50 organizations representing a diverse set of stakeholders, including public school advocates, parents, social justice, faith leaders, and environmentalists who are dedicated to ensuring that all New Jersey children and school employees learn and work in safe, healthy, modernized school buildings. Uh, that being said, I am here tonight as well in support of the United for Sports Digna, United for Dignified Schools, and the parents and students of this community as they look to seek air conditioning and temperature control in their schools, which I understand that you have uh, earmarked $200,000 for in your uh, budget. Um, you know, I feel that that is wonderful news um, to aid in implementing air conditioning in these three schools that desperately need it uh, would be a, a huge milestone for this community. Um, we are unclear, however, if all the schools would receive support or how that money would be spent. As you know, school facilities such as this one directly affect health, behavior, engagement, and learning. Studies show that healthy school will reduce staff and student illness, absenteeism, and nurse visits. Some of the many issues our coalition deals with are temperature control and indoor air quality, both of which I am told are a huge concern within this district. Comfortable temperatures and good air quality are essential to effective teaching and student success and well-being. When classrooms are too hot or too cold, staff and students will suffer headaches, drowsiness, and difficulty concentrating. In addition, life-threatening breathing difficulties such as asthma can become exacerbated by the cold as well as heat and humidity, according to the CDC. I understand the difficulties facing funding. I attend the SDA board meeting every month. Um, I follow them. We are actually making a push to have SDA funding reestablished so that you can get the support that you need. But in the meantime, we still need to adhere to the PIOSH indoor air quality standards, which require districts to have a written plan to comply with the IAQ standards and identify a designated person who is responsible for compliance. The standard requires each district to establish and follow a preventative maintenance schedule for heating and cooling systems. It requires the district to make sure the heating and cooling systems are in proper operating order when temperatures are outside of the range of 68 degrees to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Maintenance records must, must be kept for three years and must be available to employees and their unions. Unfortunately, my understanding is that temperatures within these districts, these three buildings, often exceed that acceptable range, and efforts to remediate this ongoing issue or re relocate affected students and staff have been, have been minimal at best. I implore you to please consider the health and well-being of those that you are responsible for while in these buildings. Sufficient cooling must be attainable during hot months, whether that be by permanent or portable air conditioner, or the relocation of students and staff to a cooler location. I think everyone in this room would agree that we want to see our New Brunswick students succeed. The goal is to give each and every student the best possible education we can. We want them to enjoy school, to be excited about learning. Our children should not have to beg to stay home because it's too hot in the classroom, to come home crying because they suffer for seven or eight hours in a sweltering classroom day after day. Let me ask you, could you learn in that environment? Could you honestly do your best? Could you give 100%? I certainly know that I could not. Please give these students their best chance. Please find the funds to ensure your classrooms are healthy and safe. Our children deserve better in their county. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Esmeida, este, soy una madre de familia, también tengo niños en la escuela de New Brunswick. Good evening. Good evening, my name is Esmeida Solano. 
and have students in the district. Presentamos Unidos por Escuelas Dignas, la reciente formada campaña por padres. Primero, queremos agradecerles su atención a nuestras preocupaciones sobre la falta de aire acondicionado en las tres escuelas. Nos dio gusto escuchar en la última reunión que han destinado 200.000 en el presupuesto para la instalación de aire acondicionado. We represent the newly formed parent-led campaign Unido, Unidos por Escuelas Dignas, United for Dignified Schools. First, we want to thank you for paying attention to our concerns about the lack of air conditioning in three schools. We were glad to hear at the last meeting that you have tentatively earmarked $200,000 in the budget for the installation of air conditioning, but we still have many questions. We sent Superintendent Johnson and the board these questions last week and hope you can provide answers now. En el término de la instalación de aire acondicionado, ¿cómo se comprará con el costo de los proyectos anteriores de instalación de aire? ¿Cómo los terceros pisos en las escuelas Lincoln y Livingston? How much would $200,000 by in terms of AC installation. How does it compare with the cost of past partial AC installation projects like the third floors of Lincoln and Livingston schools? Yeah. Is it enough to also cover the cost of electrical upgrades which the district has said are a necessary component of AC installation in these schools? Thank you. Okay, so the first question is, in terms of how much it would buy in terms of AC insulation, we've engaged the architect, we have a, an estimate of a budget of $150,000 to $200,000 will cover the supply of the electric in Roosevelt School and air conditioners to put into the 20 classrooms on the third floor of Roosevelt School. So $200,000 should get us air conditioning on the third floor of Roosevelt School. The second part of that question is, how does it compare to the cost? So air conditioners, in terms of putting in wall units, typically cost about $5,000 a unit. The issue is the electric capability of the school. In 2015-16, we went out to bid to provide air conditioning to Lincoln School. And the electrical upgrade alone, the prices were in the mid 300s to high $300,000 range. So Livingston School should be about the same. So our estimate in order to just to provide the electric alone to Lincoln and Livingston School would be anywhere four to $500,000 each school. Then once you have the electric, it'll probably cost you another $150,000 to $200,000 to now supply that electric through the building to the floors and put in the wall units. So as you can see, I think that answers the third part of it. It is not enough to cover the cost of those. Things, right? So we would love to do those, but right now we're facing a battle of keeping class sizes in the state mandates and being in compliance with laws and regulations of student class sizes and providing all of the great programs that we're providing right now. Um, I actually have, if you want me to save the time, I have a copy of that email. I came prepared to answer those questions. So rather than if you're going to uh, have her read through the rest of them, if you want, I'll just go down the list and answer them now if that would make everybody happy. So the next question was, if the budget is approved, 
what will the process be for determining how the funds are spent? So the process is that we've engaged the architect, they're going to prepare all the bid documents, those we will advertise in the newspaper, and we will receive bids. If those bids are within the budget that we've set, we will award the project, and that timeline should be in time for us to have this completed for the summer. In terms of how we chose Roosevelt as a priority is because we've set a priority of reaching the third floor of all the schools and working our way down because those are the areas of the schools that get the hottest. So we have air conditioning on Lincoln School third floor, Livingston School third floor, so now it's Roosevelt School third floor. And then we will look to go to the second floor. And so the one question is, if it's approved, will it be definitely be completed this summer? The answer is, I can't say definite, but that is the plan, and those are the timelines that, yes, we should be able to complete it this summer. And the funding that we set aside in the budget, uh, the question is, the proposed 200000 was presented as part of the preliminary 1920 budget. Is this completely distinct? from so-called breakage funds from the 2018-19 budget? The answer to that question is yes. So is it possible that the district might then able to dedicate additional resources to AC insulation in the summer beyond the $2,000 from breakage funds? The answer is yes, with the great, the first amount of breakage funds that we're trying to recover will need to be funding vacancies and positions that we currently have in the school district now. The first priority is funding, staffing, to ensure that we continue to keep the class sizes at within state levels. So the last question was, from our understanding, past and partial AC installation projects have primarily been funded through these breakage funds at the end of the budget year. Is that for first time in recent memory, the district has specifically earmarked funds for AC insulation at the beginning of a budget year? Um, I don't think it's the first time. Every year we budget money for different capital projects and have a rotation on a priority list. I think this is the first time that we have specifically announced to the public that this is what we're spending that money on. So those are the questions per the email. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi, this is Lori from Park Boulevard. I am wondering how the state makes one estimate and then funds at 75% of that estimate. I can't read through and pay attention at the same time to what was being said. Um, is the entire 25% difference made up by the staff that won't be replaced, that retired? or aren't there anymore? So what I was saying is that we are being funded. So the state has, it used to be an Abbott district, as you know, we're a former Abbott district. We used to be able to go to court. I've been to court myself many times. We were always successful where we could get supplemental funding. The state devised a new funding formula, right? And that new funding formula says that they're giving money to every district based on uh, their needs. And the Supreme Court and the Law Center, everyone said, great, this funding formula will get all the former Abbott districts and all the students across New Jersey the same amount of money. So, based on that funding formula, we are due $163 million in equalization aid alone. We've only getting $118 million. So we're getting 72% of the equalization aid that we deserve to get. That so, in terms of our budget, now the second part of this is, there's what they call an adequacy budget. So the state looks at what your, your children are, what their needs are, what the state aid you should receive, what your local fair share is, comparative, right? And then they come to a budget that says, if you spent X amount of money, you would be spending an adequate amount of money for your budget for your school district. 
Our adequacy budget the last five years has always been around 30 million below adequacy. It has ballooned this year to 40, the 1920 budget will be $48 million below adequacy. So we are at a point where we're, my point was we are literally operating a budget with 75 cents for every dollar we need and deserve based on our student population. And my question is, where is that mostly being made up in staffing? Or where is, where is the 25% that we're missing? Where are we not staffing? staffing it's not having the staffing we need, right? It's not being able to provide and spend money on facilities and upgrade air conditionings. It's not being able to provide all the staff we need in the schools to really provide all the programs that the board and the superintendent are implementing. Even though we haven't been able to do that, they've been able to reallocate resources and really implement some great programs. And, and how has our student uh, staff ratio been? I, I don't know. The... Well, you had mentioned that like wanting to keep it at a, at a good level. I was just wondering what it is these days. Well, I think in terms of pre-K, they're below 15. Well, yeah, I know. You know kindergarten's below 21. And the rest really? of the grades are somewhere in the 25 area. Some schools are 28. And some schools have a couple of classrooms, I think, that may even approach 30. I think this school alone is overcrowded. We had to hire 10 new teachers at the high school alone for the number of kids that we have. Yeah. The overcrowding is, I'm especially concerned with the younger grades. All the, all the kindergartens are 21? Yes. Okay, um, that is actually good news to me. It's great. Yeah, as a, as a kindergarten teacher for over 30 years, 21 would have been heaven. But anyway, um, so my question now is that in this, when we're in this kind of a position, which as you said, hasn't been great, we've been under historically, but now we did it balloon the amount that we're under by. I mean, it really seems that we can't afford to continue to not tax people that come into our community and make a bunch of money off of people that live here or attracting new people to live here. Um, I just, you know, imagine if, uh, if Walgreens was chipping into, I mean, there's another coal mine over there and they could be chipping in on, on uh, you know, some of this, making up this budget. Um, you know, as a taxpayer, I'm not crazy about the increase, but I can live with that for this for education. Yeah, and that, that but tax increase gives us one point six million dollars. So, you know, but I I'm think saying for other taxpayers, it may be more of a, more of a hardship. You know, even if they do like education, it just may be a hardship to to deal with that increase. And um, so, I appreciate that it wasn't all you know made up for on a. On a homeowners tax, but, but it just seems like we can't afford to not be taxing. I understand at one point it was felt that, you know, we needed to attract people to come to New Brunswick, but now it seems like we're an attractive place. You know, except, but what we could really use the money is the school system. So why are we letting all these people come here and even like residential places that may bring more kids for the, for the school system and, and not pay their fair share? But as we all know, in lieu of tax payments, bypasses the school system, and it just doesn't seem fair. I've, I've given my opinion on that many times, so I'll, I'll refrain. Um, in terms of the budget, whether who's paying or not, right. the district has rateables, and we can increase it a certain amount. So how much it costs each individual taxpayer, that's really the argument that you're proposing. That's really not the argument that we have to deal with. No, I'm, we're, I'm just we're saying. raising those taxes. So. I, you know, obviously it couldn't be all be made up from the taxpayers. It was an increase anyway. But I wonder when the state is looking at, like, so they have, have they're giving us less money now. But I wonder if they're looking at, like, you know, our city as a whole, because you know, we're part of the city public schools, they're thinking that our city as a whole isn't trying hard enough to pull our own weight. You understand what I'm saying? Like it looks like, well, they could do more, so we're going to give them less. 
I don't know. That's what that's what occurs to me when I see it. I say, well, the state doesn't want to give us as much money, and they're like, well, maybe they're thinking we should be getting more money from some of these um, big players that are in our city. So that is not really a question, except if 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 you if you happen to know if the state uh, if that's part of the state rationale, or if it was just a new formula. I mean, they had to base the new formula on something. They couldn't just say, you oh, know, we don't feel like giving you this much money. Do you know how they made the new I formula? I do not know the details on how they based them, what that formula was. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you, ma'am, for your question. Buenas tardes. Brunswick. 
I'm here. Do you, I mean, I'm just checking the the budget, and I think as many other times that we've been here is that uh, we have as a parents, as a community, always we complain about that we know already for years that we don't have enough money. How we move the money, and I think most of the time is uh, we when you already decide where the money is gonna go, right? You already have an idea where the money is going to be spent. You guys have the experience managing the money of the kids, of the community. But we are now part of the process. And, uh, and I think this is, uh, I think at the other time when the parents were here, we were here together, I, I asked, uh, please uh, use the PTOs, use the PTAs, use the different organizations that we are here, we come and we interest in participating. How are we going to get involved in the process? I think it's very sad to hear just the decisions that you guys make. And we always come with ideas, and, and I go to different meetings, and I hear these this situations, and we don't, uh, we, we, you, I just heard that it's not enough professors or teachers for kids. There is not money for programs. Well, we sent you, I sent to the, to the superintendent an email, and with a proposal for, for collaboration with the European University and with the programs for kids after school, no response yet. Uh, somebody from Rutgers University sent again an email to the superintendent, no response yet. Uh, I approached uh, the other day that I was here, another member of the board asking for collaboration because we need, I know we don't have, we don't have enough resources, the community is getting it's growing very fast. Now the situation we have right now, what we gonna do? How we gonna work together? I can hear you guys see the numbers and you guys are still deciding. All right, so you wanna continue deciding and you wanna hear the complaints that we have then and you think that we come here to attack the board. It's not, it's like we came to ask you how we are going to collaborate because our kids, while you guys take decisions and analyze and decide and we come here, we pass already one month, and the next month, and the next month, and then we continue having problems. Kids are getting out of the school without the proper education. They send their kids to Canada to North because they don't get it enough, enough grades to get into New Brunswick. They're not competitive. We need to change that. So we have to collaborate. I think I've been here before and I said we have this community center. How are we going to use the spaces to create programs so we can help after school but we need to work together. If I, if I check the, all the, the, the details of the budget, we hear here to, you said we are hearing about the budget, you asked a question about how the budget, about the budget. Do you really care about what I want to say about the budget? Do you really want to take in consideration what the parents are asking you about the budget? How do you want to make us part of the mismanagement of the money of our kids? Because this is the kids' money, you know? And I think we have a, we have really this connection so here in many, many ways, but I think um, the less we collaborate and you educate us, so when you the expertise, you the guys who have the experience. Maybe we don't know too much as far as how this works, but if we don't collaborate, how are we going to change this? How many more, uh, uh, how many more uh, generations are going to continue? left out, out of the opportunities that our universities or colleges are offering. Think about the numbers. We have, you, you say it yourselves and you hear it. We have many kids in our public schools. And then we need to create more. I, I really, you know, I want to say thank you so much and congratulate you for the new programs, the, 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 the tech uh, school. I think it's going to be a very good opportunity. Uh, but I've seen also how many kids have been left out of these opportunities because not many know about the different, uh, um, how many parents don't know how to approach this, this, these new programs. And I'm seeing as another edition that was occurred in the past. I think uh, uh, many students, we did a survey, we did an interview, just recently, a uh, questionnaire, and many of the, of the, of the uh, high schoolers and people that is already in Rutgers, uh, students that went to the Brunswick uh, schools complain that there's many good programs that are offered in more district, but not many students know about it. So I think we got to work on that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you.
any other questions? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Hendricks, can we take the next? Yeah, item? the resolution. Do it together? Yes. Okay. So I need a motion to accept the budget resolutions A and B. Second. Roll call, Mr. Mrs. Sewell? Yes. Mrs. Titus? Yes. Mrs. Solis? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Varela? Yes. Ms. Ortiz? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, thank you. We will come back out now at 7 o'clock for a regular board meeting.